And today I'm finding out about things that help us go up and down. Have you ever been in a lift? Ooh. Up we go! <laughs> Lifts are really useful. They help us to get to different floors in a building very quickly. But do you know how a lift works? Let's find out. How does it work? Lift. A lift is built inside a frame called a lift shaft. And there are lots of different types of lifts. There are glass lifts you can see inside. Lifts hidden behind doors. And lifts on the outside of buildings. When we want to use a lift, we call the lift by pressing one of these buttons. And when we press one of these buttons, it sends a message to a computer which then tells the lift which floor to go to to pick us up. On the wall of the lift car, there are buttons that show us the different floors that we can travel to. When I press the button, the lift doors will close. Like that. Down we go. Oh, looking over the edge makes me feel a bit wobbly. <laughs> if we look here at the screen, this tells us which floor we're on. Two. One. And go for ground floor. The lift door's open and we can get out. That was great. We travelled to the ground floor really quickly. But how does the lift car go up and down? I think we need to take a closer look. Inside the lift shaft, the lift car hangs on steel ropes fixed by an anchor. The steel ropes go over a wheel called a sheave. Hanging from the other end of the steel ropes is a heavy weight called a counterweight. The counterweight weighs almost the same as a lift full of people. When we want the lift car to go up, an electric motor turns the sheave wheel. As the sheave wheel turns, it moves the steel ropes, lowering the counterweight. As the counterweight moves down, the lift moves up to the top. When we want the lift to go down, the sheave wheel moves in the opposite direction. The steel ropes pull the counterweight up and the lift travels downwards to the bottom. That's really clever, isn't it? Shall we see all of those parts working for ourselves? Chris is the lift engineer. He's lowered the lift car and given me special permission to go on top of it so we can see the parts more clearly. Can you see? The steel ropes are fixed to that metal beam above my head. And the steel ropes are really thick and strong. Well, they come down to the top of the lift car, where they then wrap under the sheave wheels. The ropes go through the roof of the lift car and over to the other side, where they're fixed to a pulley. But how does the lift car know when to stop? On the top of each lift car, there's something called a sensor just here. And the sensor sends an invisible light between these two points. It's called infrared light. This infrared beam of light is broken each time the lift car moves to a new floor by a piece of metal called a floor vane. And each floor vane has a slightly different pattern depending on which floor we're on. This tells the lift car which floor is which, so it knows when to stop. 
I'm setting up my special cameras so we can see how all these parts work together when the lift is moving. All set and ready to go, and Chris has given me special permission to go up and down on top of the lift car. And down we go. The sheave wheels are turning and the steel ropes are lowering the lift car down the lift shaft. This is so much fun. We're going to the ground floor, so the sensor on the top of the lift car is looking for the floor vein with the pattern that matches the ground floor. And look, there it is now. The floor vein has moved through the sensor to break the infrared light. Wow, that was brilliant. Can we go back up again? Certainly can. Now we're going back up, let's see if we can see the counterweight as it passes the lift car. Look, there it is. Well, the counterweight is that huge metal silver block and it moves down as the lift moves up. And it weighs about one and a half times this lift car. It's really heavy. Did you hear that sound? That was the noise of the motor stopping. It was braking, telling the lift to stop. I loved seeing how a lift works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the wheel that the steel ropes go over? That's right, it's called a sheave wheel. Did you hear the clicking sound the motor made when the lift car stopped? And did you see the metal counterweight as it passed by the lift car? <laughs> Lifts are really great for moving us up and down from one floor of a building to another. But what if we wanted to travel really, really far up? Into space. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Ignition. In a rocket! Astronauts who travel up into space have to wear a special suit called a spacesuit. But do you know how a spacesuit is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Spacesuit. To find out how a spacesuit is made, I've come here to a space museum. Space begins around 60 miles above our planet Earth. In space, our bodies float, and there's no air to breathe outside a spacecraft. So astronauts have to wear spacesuits when they travel to space and when they work outside a spacecraft. And this is a real life, actual spacesuit. If we look here on the astronaut's arm, can you see there's a little mirror on a piece of elastic? They use it so they can see the controls on the front of the spacesuit. Because as soon as they put the helmet on, they can't look downwards, so they need the mirror to be able to see. Now, because there's no air in space and we need air to breathe, the spacesuit will hold tanks of oxygen. And oxygen is in the air that we breathe and it will flow into the suit so the astronaut can breathe easily. The material is really thick and very strong, but that's because it's made up of 14 layers of different materials. This shows us all 14 different layers. And can you see they sit on top of each other a little bit like a sandwich? And this here has a tube running through it. And cold water runs through that tube, so when it sits against an astronaut's skin, it helps to keep them cool. This layer here is made of a material called ripstop, and it stops the astronaut suit from ripping. 
The next seven layers are made of this silver shiny material called mylar and that traps heat inside the suit. And then this last layer here is really strong. It's fireproof and waterproof, so it's a little bit like astronaut armour. How brilliant is that? It can be very cold out in space, so I'm going to show you just how the mylar material helps keep an astronaut warm. Let's set this up just here. This is my special thermal imaging camera, and it shows me how hot or cold things are using different colours. Can you see, at the moment, my body is an orangey-red colour, and that's because my body heat is escaping to the outside through my thin cotton clothes. So if an astronaut wore thin clothes like this in space, all of their body heat would escape and they would get very cold very quickly. So what do you think is going to happen when I wrap this big sheet of mylar around me? Let's find out. camera is showing the outside of the mylar as a bluey purpley colour. What the mylar is doing is it's trapping my body heat inside and stopping it from escaping to the outside world. If I open the mylar up, you can see my body is still nice and warm and that's why an astronaut spacesuit has seven layers of mylar inside it. Stop the astronaut getting cold. This is a copy of a suit that an astronaut wears for launch and landing. That's when they leave for space and come back again. And I've got special permission to try it on. The launch suit has attachments on the front for air and electricity, a zip shaped like a V and a sealed helmet to protect the astronaut. Ta-da! How do I look? <laughs> And I even get to try on a real space glove. The amazing thing about an astronaut's gloves is that they are made to fit each astronaut perfectly. And that means they can still wiggle their fingers so they can flick switches and press the buttons needed to launch a spacecraft. The spacesuits are quite bendy too, thanks to these lines on the knees and elbows called pleats. It's extra important for the astronauts to be able to bend their knees and their arms in this suit because during launch and landing, they have to sit in this position for up to six hours. Oh, maybe I could be an astronaut one day too. I loved seeing how spacesuits are made. What was your favorite bit? Do you remember what you call people who travel and work in space? That's right, they're called astronauts. Did you hear the sound the mylar material made when I wrapped it around me? It was a rustling sound. And did you see how the mylar stopped my body heat escaping on my special camera? So the next time you go in a lift, you'll know how it works to go up and down. And now you know how a spacesuit is made to keep astronauts warm and safe when they travel to and work outside in space. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.